Welcome back. We left off. I decided to support Kagome the whole way through. I'm not sure if standing your ground is going to do something or if that just affects your character personally. We'll see. Apparently there's 14 different endings, so... <coughs> Things could go wrong really, really fast. Oh well. And so it did. Alright. So no matter what we do, they attack us. Okay, fair enough. Going on. Alright. I'm listening. Nope. How dare you? She took a step forward, but one of the guys stopped her. Come on, man. We just wanted to talk to you, and you're being rude already. I know how you talk to people. I've got first-hand experience. Man, don't start. What's going on here? A menacing voice sounded behind my back. Kobayashi said. There was no exaggeration to say Ellie saved me. What are you guys up to here? Seemingly so confident just a second ago, they all looked away. You see, Ellie. All I see is you ganging up on a single person. We just wanted to talk. About what, I wonder? What do you have to do with them? She looked at me as if like I was guilty of something, too. Nick told me about you. I should have listened. Ellie Chan, I was just worried about you. And you were going to express your worry by attacking everyone I know who isn't you? But you said yourself that he... I've said a lot. She got embarrassed for a second, but quickly recovered and continued in the same confident tone. I ain't capable of deciding who I talk to. I don't need your approval or help. Indeed, help can be very unwelcome. Ellie, but we... I'm done talking about it. The brave Sonder Kamado had no choice but to leave their field of the potential battle with their heads lowered. Thank you. Once we were left alone, I expressed my sincere gratitude to Ellie. If you think I did it for you, oh come on. She smiled and her cheeks reddened slightly. They were really in the wrong here. I'm surprised you've never noticed before. You know, whatever you might think, I don't have that much of choice in friends. You don't? My position empire imposes certain obligations. Doesn't seem to bother you much around on stage with the guitar. It's not the same. She protested fiercely. Yeah, and what's the difference? The difference is I don't know. You should thank me for saving you. I did. All right. And I'm not the real problem. There are people who get it f way worse from them. Like who? Like Kagome. Sorry, I didn't want to tell you everything on the roof with her there. But your so-called friends have been bullying Iwamura for a long time. They even gave her a black eye recently. I didn't notice any black eyes on her. She used concealer or whatever girls use. I don't know. The point is she can't do anything against them. Of course it's wrong that they picked on you, but the way you handled Kawashima yesterday. Open your eyes, Highness. Real life is happening all around you. And in real life, even beggars have problems created by rich kids. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that yesterday. I didn't really think that. I believe you, it's just that people have different hobbies. You play music, and they bully people. Don't joke about that. Ellie was sounding less and less confident. Think about it, why would I lie? What for? Why would they bully your friend? Do you want my professional opinion as a psychologist? I asked snidely. I don't know why, but... I don't need to know any more than an antelope needs to know why the lion is chasing it. You're just projecting. I'm just saying that people can be different. Ellie said nothing and turned away, as if we're such searching for something in the now noticeably thinner flow of students on their way home. I still can't believe you never noticed anything earlier. Even if I had, is that important now? She smiled sadly. You know, I'm not a judge. You don't need to explain yourself to me. I'm not. Suddenly, all hospitality disappeared from her voice. Maybe I just wanted to convince myself everything's fine. Is it working? Not really. Ellie finally looked at me and smiled. Sorry, I'll talk to them. It won't happen ever again. Don't make promises for other people. They'll listen to me. I don't think they have a choice but to listen to you, especially since your uh, family's kind of kidnapped Kagome's father. For now, I hope your friends aren't waiting for me around the corner. Want me to see you home? No way. Then goodbye. See you around. See ya. I knew that after Ellie chastised them, I had nothing to worry about for a day or so. But I still spent, spent the walk home glancing over my shoulder. I cannot speak today. I stopped at the gate and looked at Himitsu's house. What would have I done had she been there? 
Maybe somewhere deep inside, I actually wanted to find Himitsu in the kitchen making dinner. Despite everything that happened the past few days, despite our fight and my behavior, just to forget about real life for an hour and immerse myself in the magic world Ellie must be living in. But the person at the dinner table wasn't Himitsu. Ah! The KGB person. So, you need help at something, right? <laughs> Finally, I've grown tired of waiting. She smiled cutely as she, cutely as she saw me. Almost as cutely as the time in the bar. But now her careless hospitality was accompanied by the notes of business-like focus and a desire to keep a polite distance. I wasn't expecting you this early. You should have. She frowned and seemingly turned into a different person. It's only been three days and you've managed to create such a stir. What exactly is so confusing about the words behave normally, Nikolai? I don't know what you're talking about. I lied but still looked away. Her observing gaze was piercing right through me. Yes, you do. First you got involved with that girl, Akira. Iwamura. I specified, realizing there was no point denying it. So I was being followed after all. And apparently by professionals. Iwamura whatever. We've been working on her father for a while now. Do you know where he is? Is he alive? Are you worried about her? As a real intelligence officer, Irina immediately seized on a weakness. I was on her shoes once, so I know how she feels. Isn't that enough? I was doing my best to speak calmly, at the same time trying to find opportunities to glance around at her for her compass. I doubted she'd come here alone. And yet she's luckier than you. Her father is alive. For now. A warm feeling spread in my chest. I hope that somehow things would end well. Why was information about Kagome's father so important to me? I see you're happy. I'm trying to think about someone other than myself. Why, that is wonderful. She exclaimed in a dramatically loud and cheerful tone. Love for the motherland begins with love for your neighbor. Here you go with the motherland again. I've already told you I don't know about my father's work. Arena frowned and fidgeted in her seat. About that. What's her name? Iwamura, you said. I nodded. I agree with you about Iwam Iwamura. She doesn't know anything. Really? I let an uncontrollable laugh, but the woman didn't react. You mean you suspect me? No, not even like that. You're still accusing me, but you believed her immediately while I'd even investigating? Why do you think? We haven't investigated her. I... It really wasn't the best time to question her about the KGB's methods. Do you want me to stop communicating with her? Oh no, quite the contrary. I would never forgive myself if your date and I was cancelled because of me. So you know about that too. I crumbled grimly. We know a lot, and what we don't, we soon will. Lines off, lines straight off of propaganda posters seeped into her speech again. Except it's not a date. If you're waiting for someone else, I'm afraid he won't come. Itonose-san's open, friendly face appeared before my eyes. We've invited your acquaintance for a little talk. His papers didn't prove very interesting, however. Is he alive? We're not animals, Nikolai. What do you take us for? To be honest, I saw no real difference between the KGB, the Americans, and the corporation. When you can't judge a threat accurately, an asteroid about to crash on the Earth is about as dangerous as a lion laying in ambush. Or vice versa. Arena was trying to assure me that in the end everything was for my own good, and the fact that both of us were Russian had to mean something. But if I put all sentiment aside, this woman was as alien to me as Kobayashi Jun. Then what do you want from me? She squinted slyly and fixed her hair. You've been seen in the company of the granddaughter of Kobayashi Corporation's chairman. How come you know so much about my life? Do you ever spies behind every tree or something? Should I look around for bugs around the house? No need. She replied coldly. Fine, but if you think Iwamura knows nothing, it's different about Ellie. You think her grandfather lets her in on his business? Oh, you've got your eyes on her as well. Would you look at that? I didn't expect it of you, Nikolai. Well, great achievements require ambitious goals. We could use our own man in the Kobayashi family. Jesus Christ, are you serious right now? In any case, you've neglected my warning. But it also happens that you find yourself in quite an interesting position. A position beneficial to us. Nobody knows if you'll actually get anything out of Kobayashi's granddaughter, but we can't rule out the possibility. As for Iwamura, since her father is out of reach now, it seems logical to look after his daughter. And the closer we are, the better. I don't remember you hiring me. We'll I'll list you as a freelance operative. I need some time to think. I said carefully. Do you really believe you have a choice? She pulled out one of the smiles in her analyst arsenal. This mysterious and frightening one. 
I'll give you as much time. I'll give you time to collect your thoughts and process all this information, but remember, you won't get much. And don't forget, we are always close by. Had Comrade Major really come alone? Whether I had a choice or not, she was right about one thing. I had to decide quickly. At the moment, I saw no alternatives. The storm my life had been become was throwing me from one black root rock onto another. From Kagome to Ellie, from Ellie to Kobayashi Corporation, from there directly into the loving arms of the KGB, Major Irina Mostova. At least they didn't suspect Kagome of anything. Could I believe that? In any case, now I felt like we were bound by our common misfortune. I had to tell her about the Soviets. To Tokyo at night seemed different after Irina's visit. People were casting suspicious, askew gazes, glances at me. Sinister shadows were jumping along the walls of every house, and the enemy was behind every corner. I was paranoid to the point that where even regular car horns made me jump, and no matter how hard I tried, I never managed to see my real pursuers. You know, you probably won't, if, especially if they're spies. The train car lazily spat out the last half-asleep passengers at the station closest to the meeting point. This time, there was no point in coming out earlier. So I arrived 40 minutes before the agreed hour. It was unbearable to just stand on the bridge, so I kept walking in circles waiting for Kagame. And then after five minutes before midnight, she finally appeared. You're early, she noted grimly, like she was commanding a prisoner who showed up early to his execution and was beaming with enthusiasm. I just got here. I lied, not even knowing why. Sorry for today's episode on the roof. I really didn't want it to end like that. Never mind. Does it matter now? Let's go. We shouldn't make each one as a son wait. About that. He won't come. What do you mean by he won't come? Kagome asked with a genuine surprise. I should have told you everything earlier, but I didn't want to create even more problems for you. Promise that you're going to listen to me and won't jump to conclusions? Spit it out already. Last Sunday, I came across a woman, a Russian. She works for the KGB. Naturally, I left out the circumstances under which I met Irina. She needed information about my father's work, some documents, and so on. Obviously, I didn't tell her anything because I don't know anything, and I was about to let go with an order to keep my head down. That easily? Kigami asked in an unexpectedly calm tone. Yeah, that easily. What else could they get out of me? And naturally, you didn't find it necessary to share this information with me. These people don't joke around, the less you know the better. Somehow, it seems to me that's not the entire story. Yeah, you see. I smiled idiotically and suddenly realized I'd scratched my neck bloody. That woman, her name is Arena. She came to my place again and to this time she told me more. They've been spying on you and your father too. But they don't expect you of anything. I waved my hands to emphasize the point. And she told me your father is alive. Of course, they don't know where he is or what happened to him. Kigami's face got red and red with every word. And you're only telling me all this now. I only found out a couple hours ago, I swear. So this whole time, so this whole time, your KGB has been after us. It's not mine, I said carefully, and he knew about it and kept quiet. I didn't know anything. What if you're with them? What if this is just a trick to, to... She got so angry that she was just huffing and puffing and able to say a word. Would you listen to yourself for once? I told you the truth and what do I get? Your hysterics aren't going to help here. Hysterics? The way she laughed was actually intimidating. It's not your father who's been kidnapped and held hostage. It's not you the KGB is spying on. It is, actually. It's not you who had to enter the every school every day like it's a battlefield, and then work at a restaurant till night to make a living. Kagome realized she had gotten a bit carried away, bit her lip, and lowered her head. Sorry, I understand you're having it rough. Yeah, sure you do. You know what? I'm alone in this country, and now I have no idea what to believe or who's to blame for my parents' death. You think no one understands your suffering? Well, maybe you're right. But you know, everyone looks at life from their own little bubble. You probably think someone else's issues are trivial, but to them, they're vital. In the same way, some people look at you right now and only laugh. I guess you're right. Kagome replied unexpectedly softly. You just get tired of living under the same pressure of responsibility all the time. Tired of the endless attacks. Before, I was managing to hold on somehow. I knew my father had it hard and really needed support. But he's going to support me now that he's not here. He'll be back. That's all I managed to force out. To be honest, I really don't know what to say. And I'm not sure my words would change anything at all. 
Sorry, I should have told you about the KGB right away. As my mom used to say, lies always come to lie. Yeah, mine used to say something like that too. So, what about Ichinose? She sniffed and wiped her ears. Irina said that they took him, that there was nothing interesting in his papers. But is he okay? If we take her word for it, would you? It seems that she hadn't been lying openly, but instead skillfully manipulating facts. Most likely, Ichinose really was alive and there was no point in lying about it. If they'd killed him, it'd serve as a nice warning to us. And trying to help me and Kagome? Why? I think in this case, she was telling the truth. I just wonder how much easier her truth makes things for Ichinose himself, or my father. Your father was way more important to them. I'd like to believe so. A sudden gust of wind made Kagome shiver. Anyway, there's no one to wait for here. See ya. Wait, I'll walk you to your place. I'll manage. She replied without a hint of anger. It's not a polite gesture. They're probably following you and me. I never noticed them, and I don't want to repeat the mistake. As you wish. Kagome shrugged her shoulders and quickly walked towards a restaurant. I silently followed her, glancing around occasionally. The street lights were on, but it was still too hard to see anything beyond 20 meters. If they were following us, they had a significant advantage. Probably like a sniper rifle or something somewhere. At the restaurant, on the stairs, sat a decrepit, seemingly hundred-year-old man. Grandpa. Kagome shouted and ran to him. Why aren't you asleep? Huh? With effort, he raised his cloudy eyes to her. Apparently, he was asleep. Kagome-chan, finally. Did something happen? Yes, this is for you. He took a folder somewhere behind his back and handed it to Kagome. What is this? A man came in the evening and asked me to give this to Iwamura-san. Kagome impatiently undid the string and quickly flipped through the thick folder. A small piece of paper fell out of it. I picked it up and read. Kagome, said Chan. I'm afraid I might be followed, so I'm sending you this copy of the documents. Be careful. Ichinose-san. Kagome said with deep respect in her voice. What about your friend? The old man who was beginning to fall asleep again suddenly grew more aware. Oh yeah, that, he's Niko-san, my classmate. Nice to meet you. I made a demonstratively low bow. Grandpa, these are very important papers. We need to read them, though. You should go to sleep already. You always push me around like I'm a child. He stood up, grunting, and walked inside. If you really want to look at these documents, we'll need at least... We'll need light at the very least. Just don't get the wrong idea. She said indignantly, opened the door, and invited me in with a gesture. A minute later, I was standing in Kagome's room. Even though it was barely larger than my attic, Everything in it was unusually too clean, or to me, clean and orderly. There's no TV or VCR. You'd be hard pressed to find the space for them anyway. The furniture looked old and probably was. In general, I felt uncomfortable there, but I couldn't understand why. Sorry, this is all I got. Kagome seemed to have read my mind. It's okay, I just don't visit other people very often. Especially girls, I mean. I hope you don't get any weird ideas. Me too. Gomi sighed heavily, rolled her eyes, and sat down on the floor, throwing the folder under the bed. Endless rows of digits and formulas, speed flow charts, calculations of orbits and trajectories. The papers looked like they were copied by an ancient machine with ink that had near dried out, which meant bits weren't legible and others looked more like hieroglyphics. Any ideas? Why are you asking me? You have to have better grades than me. What does that have to do with understanding this gibberish? You'd need a PhD to decipher it. Probably multiple. No ideas at all? Well... With a certain degree of confidence, I can say they were gonna launch something somewhere. Launch? Like a rocket? Yeah. If my father really was building rockets like Ichinose-san said, then that lines up. But my father's a chemist. A nuke. A lot of secrecy, then. I don't know. Enthusiastically, while understanding less and less every minute. Numbers and formulas danced before my eyes in bizarre circles, and soon I started hearing their mocking whispers in my head. Of course, it was stupid to hope that a normal school kid would understand what must have been years of work by dozens of scientists. What do you think the KGB knows about me? No idea, why are you asking? It's not every day you just find out you're being watched by people like them. Oh, so you're fine with the Japanese government and Jap and corporations spying you? With them taking your father? I never thought they'd been watching me personally. Oh, put it that way. I grew embarrassed and carefully glanced at Kagome. She kept examining her papers. 
You're acting as if this happens to you every day. If I freak out too, we'll end up in the madhouse together. So I'm freaking out? She asked in a suddenly calm tone. Sometimes. I probably have my reasons, don't I? Probably. The topic was too dangerous to pursue further. I yawned, stretched, and only noticed that Kagome was snuff snuffling peacefully with her hand under her head. Hey, I called her quietly but didn't wake up. What am I supposed to do now? I stood up to walk around the room, only to run into a problem. One step was enough to run into a wall. The clock reads two at night. It really was late. I took another look at the heavy folder with the documents. Hesitated for a bit and squatted down, carefully picked Kagami up and put her on her bed. She turned out to be much lighter than I'd expected. I covered her with a blanket, took the papers, and walked out of the room. Her grandfather was sitting at one of the tables with a cup of tea in his hands. Leaving already? Gummy fell asleep. I said apologetically. She's having a hard time. All of a sudden, his eyes became clear, but only for a moment. Especially now with Shinji gone. I understand. I don't know what kind of relationship you two have, but I hope you take care of my granddaughter. I could tell right away that you're a good guy. Cooking for other people for so many years makes you understand them. His words might have sounded a bit inappropriate at first, but considering their situation, I could understand the old man. He probably wanted Kagome to live like a normal teen instead of working in this dying restaurant just to make ends meet. I'll do my best. The taxi was bringing me home to a dark Tokyo flooded with electric lights. It seemed like the city hadn't changed at all in the last couple of weeks. It was sleeping, not even suspecting that somewhere deep in its core, something terrible was brewing. Was this project a threat to certain organizations? Countries? Continents? The entire planet? I paid the driver and spent a while standing in front of my house, looking into the darkness, pointlessly trying to pick out my silent watchers. Seventeen oh nine nineteen eighty seven. It's hard to remember what you're dreaming about when you're snapped awake unceremoniously by the persistent ringing of a doorbell. By the time I pressed the door, the ringing gave way to furious knocking. I'm coming, I'm coming. Standing in the doorway was an infuriated Kagome. Where are the documents? Did you take them? Kagome, do you even know what time it is? By the way, what time is it? The documents. She repeated in a threatening tone and unceremoniously squeezed herself inside, pushing me aside with an elbow. I obediently followed her. Aha. Kagome exclaimed victoriously, having discovered the documents on the kitchen table. I'd been so tired yesterday that I went to bed immediately after tossing them there. It's six o'clock. I pleaded after checking the time. No wonder I felt terrible. I'd only managed to sleep for three hours, if that. Are the trains running already, or did you come on foot? Who allowed you to take the documents? I thought it'd be safer this way. He thought. Next time, think harder. She grabbed the entire pile of papers and prayed to leave. Hey, listen to me for a moment. The KG people already knew where I was going yesterday, so to a degree, I had nothing to fear. And they must have been following you as well. They may have seen the courier deliver these papers to your restaurant. Either way, you should know they sound sometimes to me. I'm sure he'd approve of my actions if he knew what we would do now. Kagome didn't respond. Instead, she returned to the table. Carefully put the folder with the documents on it and sat down in a chair. You could have told me instead of running away when I fell asleep. I don't want to wake you up. I noticed. Well, do excuse me for... That's not what I meant. You put me in bed. Thank you. The nights are getting colder and I don't want you to get sick. I replied with embarrassment. If it'll make you feel better, you can take the documents. You're right, I should have talked to you first. It's fine. What matters is that they're safe. We, we'll need them today. What for? I called an acquaintance of my father, and he agreed to meet with us. He's a scientist as well, so we'll likely get more out of these papers than either of us. That sounds good and all, but what about surveillance? I'm confident nobody's been following me today. So was I until yesterday's visit from Irina. What made you think she was telling the truth? What made me? I said slowly. And really, the thought had never crossed my mind. Just because you're paranoid doesn't mean you're not being followed. Is the opposite true? Could the seemingly obvious fact that I had been followed made me paranoid? Why would she lie about something like that, and why wouldn't they be watching me? You think Soviet spies just casually walk around the streets in the middle of the day and follow anyone they want? I think the Japanese government might have something to say about that. 
Well, if you put it that way. Why would they risk exposing themselves over some school kid? But she knew things she couldn't have learned otherwise. You only thought about it. Maybe they watched my restaurant near your house. Maybe your school as well. I don't know. But if they had an agent constantly following your every move, they wouldn't have enough men. It wasn't likely that Arena had brought an entire spy division from her with her from the USSR. Gilmi is probably right about that. But you must know we have no way to sure, make sure if any of that's true. If they aren't watching us, we'll never find out. Could it be worse? She suddenly smirked and lays lazily leaned behind the chair. We might get killed. Is this really life? I think as long as you're alive, healthy, and sane, it is. We've only got one life and shouldn't be so careless with it. Listen to this philosophizing. Listen to this existen existentialism. Kigome scoffed, walked to the fridge and opened it, carefully checking its contents. What are you doing? I'm gonna make breakfast. She suddenly froze, closed the door, and turned me and added a smirk. Unless my lord would object, of course. I personally haven't eaten yet, but decided to run to your place first place in the morning. Your lord has no objections. I mocked her and left the kitchen to freshen up. Ten minutes later, various food bowls and plates were scattered about. A stone soup. Something not to your liking? What made you think that? Your expression. What expression? That one. She scrambled and started eating. Well, she was no no worse a cook than Himitsu, as I'd already discovered. It's just that Himitsu hadn't made a simple breakfast in, into such a feast in a long while. Maybe Kagome just wanted to show off a bit. Everyone loves having their talents appreciated. And it seemed to me she was extremely confident in her cooking. Everything's very tasty, I didn't expect. That's not what I wanted to... Not any worse than your redhead friend's cooking? Himitsu, how do you know she cooks for me? You have to be blind not to notice that you being a you bring a benna with you almost every day. How about you make them yourself? Fair enough, and not any worse. Thank you. I folded my hands into a praying gesture and gave her a demonstratively slow bow. You don't need to go that far. If you say so. So when and where will this acquaintance of yours be waiting for us? Are you sure that meeting at a train station in the morning during rush hour is a good idea? If they're really following us like you claim, then what does it matter? We won't be safe anywhere. Actually, you're you're probably right, I acknowledged reluctantly. Kagome's father's acquaintance appeared right on time. He seemed to be on the same age as Shinoze, but looked more useful, slim, fit, and energetic. His eyes still had a spark to him. Ah, yes, to the bar. Ishimura-san, this is Nikolai. Kagome introduced me briefly. Pleasure to meet you. Likewise, let's get to the point. I can see you've got a lot of material. Ishimura quickly flipped through the folder, then picked out a few sheets, took them out, and started to examine them more carefully. It looks like a lot of dots from this angle, but it's probably something actually interesting. I fidgeted impatiently. It's better not to hurry him, but wanting patiently turned out to be extremely difficult. Kigami, on the contrary, looked outwardly calm, but I was absolutely sure the same emotions were boiling inside her. So you're saying that Ishinose-san gave this to you? Do you know each other? Yeah. We've met uh, at a few scientific conferences, but I wouldn't say we're personally acquainted. To be honest, I had no idea what level of transparency was appropriate when talking with the man. All Kagome had, had told me was that we'd show him the documents and I had no good reason to object. After all, I wanted to find out more about all this, even though I'm afraid I'd make a mistake. It's pretty strange that he gave such important documents to you, Kagome. You see, my dad. Come on, Kagome, there's nothing to be shy about. You see, Akira-san is in the hospital. Nothing serious, I hope? Nishimura asked with a sincere sympathy in his voice. Nothing serious, just, just acute pancreatitis. But the doctor insisted on hospitalization. I had no idea he had pancreatitis. I cursed at myself for the fra failed improvisation, but Nishimura continued. Although we haven't talked a while, that's also why I was surprised by your call this morning. Sorry about that. It's fine, it's not like I'm busy at the moment. Life gets pretty boring in retirement. I could use a bit of a shakeup. Seems like we got lucky. He spent more some time before studying the papers and before I ran out of patience. Anything? He took his eyes off the documents that looked at me intently from over his glasses. Oh yeah, except for one thing. How did this material end up in your hands? Is that important? It's important to me to make sure you aren't dragging me into something bad. No, to mention, how'd all these efforts were going to be discontinued? We were just asking rep as we couldn't figure this that thing out ourselves. 
No wonder this. This is a scientific breakthrough that would push us years, maybe even decades ahead. And what's this breakthrough about? First answer my question. We told you, Ishinose's son gave them to us. Indeed, and where is he? KGB. These papers, he leaned for and are valuable enough to kill for. Ishimura, you're exaggerating. At least not with this approach. Would you explain this for a moment? I stood up and grabbed Kagome by the arm so quickly that she didn't have time to object. We stepped aside. We'll have to tell him everything. Don't even think about it. You're the one who asked him to come and now you're backing off. To be honest, I don't know him that well. Then what are we doing here? Do you have a better plan? I think that if we're already here, we should see this to the end. I said in a quieter voice. First. Fine, but if something goes wrong, it's your fault. We returned to the table, but he didn't even notice us. Glow to the documents. Ishimura san? Huh? So, what have you decided? Have you heard about the project? I decided to try and work up to it. First, Nishimura's eyes bulged and then he turned pale. Of course, I should have realized immediately. With the Chinoze san and especially Kira san's involvement. And this research, it seemed suspiciously familiar to me right away. You know what, children? I don't want anything to do with this, and I advise you the same. With these words, he stood up and all but ran for the exit. Well, so much for a talk. I sighed and turned to Kagome. Got what you wanted, told him everything, and what's the result? We decided together. Yeah, right. Fine, let's calm down and think. We can't say we achieved nothing at all. What have we achieved? That this intel is uh, dangerous. Tell them what? The two school kids are skipping classes and reading some nerdy books in a cafe? The entirety of Japan has had maybe a dozen people who can understand what's written here. Dills and Schmilz. You think I'm wrong? Should we ask our physics teacher? I'm not suggesting anything. Giyomi looked offended, rather upset. She probably didn't actually believe I'd done anything wrong, but her pride made her look for a scapegoat even here. Aren't you a bit too worried about these papers? The KGB has the originals of these documents. I don't know how valuable they are to the Russians. We can at least hope they won't hunt us down over them. And why is that? Why would you kill someone for information you already know? So that no one else can go for it? Kagome is right in. In trying to calm her down, I let my guard down. And ended up driving myself to a dead end. I was desperately pushing away the thought that there was no way out. But with each passing day, I found it harder and harder to ignore the realization that the trap was about to shut close. My life had taken a wrong turn ever since Catherine came back. First the note, then the calls, then the corporation, the KGB. Now could go on me and her father's kidnapping and these documents that had to at least be blueprints for a flying saucer. Do you disagree? I didn't know how to answer. Of course I felt sorry for Kagome and generally wanted to help her, but I had no personal stake in the situation. My father was long dead. I didn't suffer from an excess of patriotic sentiment and didn't want to be exposed to unnecessary risk for any other reason. Did Kagome understand that? Sometimes it feels like you're ready to do anything. To get my father back? Yes, I am. That's not exactly what I mean. I think the ends justify the means for you. Uh oh, don't get all fancy. What if the situation was exact opposite and you were in charge of Kobayashi Corporation? Wouldn't you utilize any method to achieve your goals, like Kobayashi Jun does? Could've, would've, should've. I'm not accusing you of anything, but I just want to point out that sometimes it's wise to stop. You're saying this like I'm about to go bomb their office. Would you give them the chance? Kagome scoffed huffily and turned her back to me. Uh, of course you would. I could use some beer about now. No. Stop. That's bad for your health. Nikolai, why are you such an alcoholic? You can go, just leave the documents. And to think this morning she seemed to be warming up to me. Had it been my imagination? I really want to help you, but you're just not letting me. If you need to charge ahead alone against the world, then it's my duty to inform you that that's stupid. You know, you're right. Kigami suddenly grew even angrier. You really don't need to be here. Sorry for dragging you all to this, Nikosan. I can handle my problems myself, and you don't need to subject yourself to danger. Here we go again. Am I wrong? What about risking it for myself? Was it that important for me to find out the truth about my parents' death? Of course, Kagome's persistence could help there, but the road to hell is paved with good intentions. The price of the truth is often unreasonably high. The easiest way to talk about the price is to sit in a comfortable chair in your office, poring over some philosophical or historical work. Meanwhile, I had to make a decision here and now. I don't know, I feel like I have to make a decision here and now. He 
if we stop here we can probably backtrack onto a different route but we're in here for the long haul I support you well since we're on the topic you aren't the only one with a stake in this whole thing my parents died because of them I'm glad you remember what's that supposed to mean her words got to me maybe finding out the truth behind my parents death wasn't the only reason I wanted to help her so much it means that I'm starting to think that you've got way too comfortable in your giant house, surrounded by cute girls who can't get enough of you for whatever reason. And with all this comfort, you forgot who your real enemies are. Was her father's kidnapping the only reason for it? I couldn't imagine a hatred like that coming about in just a couple weeks. Once again, I'm ready to help you with finding your father, because it would allow me to learn more about my past. But I'm not ready to declare a holy war on capitalism as personified by the Kobayashi family. You can turn any serious topic into a joke. She suddenly smiled and relaxed, and I could feel the tension subside. So it's a deal? For today. Gotta start somewhere. By the way, do you want to eat? It's too early for lunch, but... If it's your treat? Kagame responded calmly. Well, sure, I guess. I said reluctantly. Not that I didn't want to spend the money, I just didn't expect her to be so casual about it. The tender appeared at our table as if... By magic. What is thy desire? He had to have spoke like that on purpose. Do you come here often? Occasionally. It just seems like you and the owner know each other very well. I wouldn't say well exactly, and he's not an acquaintance I'd be proud of. Why? Let's say he can be very naggy and pushy at times. A typical Russian trait? Are you saying I nag? Sometimes. Well, that's one complaint I thought I'd never hear. I guess it's just that nobody told you before. Maybe they haven't because I'm not actually naggy. Or because they don't want to upset you. So what? You're the only brave enough to tell it is like it is. Kagome smiled apologetically, cutely, and even childlessly. Anyway, I gotta go. Thanks for the meal. By the way, can I take the documents? Sure. Having realized I haven't addressed it earlier, when she left, I ignored the naggy bartender who immediately appeared at my table, paid the bill, and returned home to get more sleep. The young body continues to function at maximum efficiency without any problems, even though only a few hours of sleep but only if you have something to do the entire day. If you just plan to wait until evening and only sleep then, sleep deprivation is gonna catch up to you very quickly. I decided not to wait for that, and having returned home at noon, immediately flopped onto the bed. I was awoken up by another doorbell. Who's there this time? Strangely enough, whoever it was only rang it once. Ellie. However, opening the door, I asked the face of someone I hadn't expected to see. Were you sleeping? Sorry for waking you up. No, I mean, I was, but no worries. She was noticeably anxious. And something was different about Ellie. It was the guitar hanging off her back. Has something happened? No, everything's fine. At least as it can be. You want to come in? I wouldn't say no. Want some tea? No, thank you. Ellie was carefully examining my kitchen. Don't worry, nobody's watching us. I joked awkwardly. On the other hand, you could really know. It's just the last time I didn't have much time to look around. Look around why? Are you gonna buy my poor old home? Where would I get the money? I smiled idiotically and lowered my head. Grandpa's money is his money. I don't have much more in my pocket than any other schoolgirl. You just don't know the condition the house is in. I'll be more than enough. I'll think about it. Ellie was fidgeting in place. Anyway, to what do I owe the honor? You haven't been to school today, so I... She was very embarrassed, as if off trying to offer an excuse for doing something questionable. I'm the coming of a real lady. So I had to drop, to die, drop by today because yesterday was awkward. I also feel guilty about what happened. After all, they're my friends. Is that all you can say? What am I supposed to say? To be honest, I'm not very good at this whole manners thing, so I'd be happy for a couple lessons. I've got a couple lessons for you. You remember, you mentioned you played bass, right? I used to play at one point. We'd be closer to the truth. Never been great, though. That's fine. For a while, we just kept silent. Well, are you going to show me your base? Oh, sure. I walked to the door in my room in frozen hesitation. Catherine and Hamitsu were the only ones who'd been there before. Oh, that was stupid. As if I was hiding something in there. Sorry for the mess. Ellie entered in after me and looked around. I expected worse. Ah, oh, there it is. She noticed the base standing next to the bed. Immediately walked to it and carefully examined the token in her hands. Not bad at all. Yeah, you know. I wanted to learn how to play a proper guitar, not a piece of wood. Uh-huh. 
She put her foot on the amplifier, adjusted the bass in her hands, and played a fairly simple melody. It's out of tune. Wait a bit. She only needed half a minute to get the bass sound right again. I can't do that. It's not difficult. You just need to remember how one string should sound and then tune to the rest. You know, when someone says it's not that difficult, that's the first tell it's going to be difficult. She smiled and handed the bass over to me. Can't achieve anything without practice. Think I could play guitar from the day I was born? Of course not, but people are different in terms of talent. Some are just naturals. Well, let's see about that. What? Ellie ran out and then a couple seconds returned with a guitar. Ah, oh, right. Give it to me. She unceremoniously grabbed the bass out of my hands, sat on the bed and started playing. Memorized it? Of course not. I replied with indignation. Then I go another time, slower. The second time really did make the melody more understandable. And what is that? One of my new songs. Ellie took her guitar out of its case. Ready? One, two, three. She started playing, and I just sat and looked at her. What? Fine, when I snap my fingers like this, start playing what I showed you. You know, there's a Russian fairy tale about a donkey, a goat, a monkey, and a bear. I don't know. So in the end, it goes something like this. And you, my friends, no matter your positions, will never be musicians. You're giving up without even trying. I'm just realistically evaluating my skill based on prior experience. Those who do nothing make no mistakes. That's not the same thing. Why? I think it suits you well. You are so afraid that somebody will think something wrong about you that you prefer not to try at all. That's an understatement. If you wanted that much fun, great. The song actually turned out relatively simple, but when you haven't held a bass in your hands in many years, everything's difficult. We just start over and over again, because I'd either forget my part or play it off rhythm. Ellie carefully and patiently showed me how to play it correctly over and over again. While I wanted to smash my head against the bass, Ellie kept repeating the same thing again and again, and finally I got it. One time, just one, we played it correctly. Woohoo. I shouted after picking the string for the last time. See, and you were afraid. But it wasn't easy. How do you feel? How do I feel? Fine, you won. What did I tell you? By the way, I wanted to ask you. I thought you were going to sing today. No, not today. She suddenly grew embarrassed and quickly put the guitar back in its case. The lyrics aren't finished yet. I see. I drawled. An awkward silence hanging in the room. You know, actually, I came to tell you that I'm ready to help you. Well, not both of you, just you. I don't want to have anything to do with that girl. Got it. You don't need to talk to her at all. But I can't promise anything. Grandpa said I shouldn't get involved in all this. And he's probably right, but... But what? Nothing. She suddenly got angry. I told you I helped, so I will. Gotta go now. I saw Ellie to the door, closed it behind her, and kept standing in the hallway. Huh? I was supposed to be happy, but it was something about this entire situation that made me anxious. Probably because you should only be going for one girl. Oh, Himitsu hadn't shown up. Books couldn't hold my attention longer than a minute, and all the TV shows seemed boring, and cleaning or washing clothes pointless, just waiting for something's hard enough. But it's even harder when you don't know what you're waiting for. In Japan, prisoners sentenced to death only learn they're about to die the morning of their execution. Until then, they can spend years or even decades in ignorance. Mahitsu never came by, and by night I was completely exhausted by all the pointless flailing about. A bed took me in its embrace, covered me with a warm blanket. Its soft pillow whispered a kind lullaby, and sleep came at once. The awakening was just as quick. I jerked up because of loud sounds coming from the yard. The sound of broken glass banging against the wall, and the stomping of someone running away. It took some time for me to come to my senses after such a short sleep, and realize I hadn't imagined all that. Had it been my imagination after all? With an effort, I got up and sneaked into the kitchen. Everything was as I had let in, no one was inside. I spent a long time hesitating before the front door, but finally threw it open and jumped outwards. There was no one there either. I noticed that the glass next to the window was broken. There was an insulting Japanese character sloppily painted on the door. Obviously, neither the KGB nor the corporation would do something this dumb, so it must have been Ellie's friends. At first glance, it was so stupid that I didn't even know how to react. Some cut my nose to spite my F face sort of crap. Before the paint would completely, I started cleaning away the obscene message. Took me a good idea, a good hour. 
Unfortunately, I didn't have a spare for the broken window, so I had to resume the result. I had to board the resulting hole somehow. Until better times. If they would ever come. The act of vandalism amused me more than frightened me. Their purpose in life was to maximize their pleasure. Not just getting nice experiences, but turning simple gratification into a cult. Sex, alcohol, maybe even drugs. Quarreling with their kind and bullying the weak. Their primitive existence, not too different from that of a pack of hyenas, might have seemed attractive to me some time ago, but now I was facing more important problems. It was already two o'clock. I was sitting in the kitchen and looking in the darkness of my home, as if expecting a monster to jump out of that far corner. Almost the whole day had been spent in expectation of a disaster. I didn't manage to get any proper sleep and now I couldn't fall asleep again. Was I really the hero of my own novel? Suddenly, I felt unbearably sad and lonely. I've never envied anyone in my life. At least, I've never wanted to live someone else's life. Now it felt exceptionally painful that some people were just living their lives, going to school and spending time with friends. Their life could seem boring and monotonous, but at the same time, they didn't have to sit like this in the middle of the night and wait for their enemies to come for them. They didn't jump at every ring of the doorbell, and they weren't looking for the KGB agents in every face. And even if they didn't have a person they loved, they were also free of all the endless nerve-wracking tied to it. It's better to be alone than with someone random, isn't it? I thought that under different circumstances, I'd be with Himitsu now. That didn't seem like a bad idea to me. But it also felt like it was written out of a page torn out of a different book. Even its format didn't match the story of my life. And there was no way I could glue it in somehow. Can your fate really be changed so radically all at once? And what's fate anyway? Does it even exist? Well... If Catherine hadn't come back, if I hadn't met Kagome and Ellie, if the not-so-sane KGB Major hadn't come up with the idea to try and pry out government secrets out of an innocent school kid, if... In the end, how was fate, the story of life, written before your birth, fundamentally different from a sequence of random events? Especially if you have no way to influence it either way. Once my exhaustion reached an unbearable level and I started blacking out, I finally managed to fall asleep. But in any case, the very thought that I wasn't in control of my own life disgusted me. Eighteen oh nine, nineteen eighty seven, and we'll leave off here. I hope you guys have enjoyed the the video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, comment, subscribe if you want, and I will see you in the next video. As always, goodbye.